Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God. It's the Revelator once again, and hoping you had a blessed week in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. And before I take you into this presentation today, I just want to give you a brief recap of what we covered last time. Last time we covered part one and two in the political council. And inside the political council, part one and two, we covered diversities in the military conspiration against the politician. We explained also about the prophecy in several different dimensions of how the prophetic inspired certain political events. We explained quite a number of issues that unfolded the fact that God is truly behind all incidents, all events that evolve and transpire inside the politics. And today we continue with the Political Council Party 3. And in the Political Council Party 3, what we are focusing on today is the politics of God. So what I need is all of you to give me a listening ear and pay attention as the Holy Spirit will be explaining and unfolding the politics of God inside the political council part three. So for us to understand more on this presentation, let's get into scriptures. In the book of First Samuel, chapter 8 verse 1 and it reads and it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel before the dynasty or the legacy of the kings in the times of old in the Old Testament there was the reign of judges who were elected by God to rule the likes of Samuel was one of the judges and Samuel was one of the judges that had been elected by God to judge over Israel as a prophet without counting the previous judges the likes of Samson and Gideon and the rest and Samuel has reached an old age and his sons they are made judges over Israel and Samuel reigns over Israel as a prophet and it so happened that his sons walked not in the ways of the Lord but turned aside after Luca and took bribes and perverted judgment then all the elders of Israel gathered to themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him behold you are now old and thy sons not walk in the ways of the Lord now make us a king to judge us like all the nations all this that is happening is a thing that is coming from the Lord but at the same time this development being a development that was being inspired by the Lord but this thing is being inspired by the Lord to manifest from within the people and the people are the ones that are now presenting themselves before prophet Samuel and requesting and asking that a king be anointed or a king be presented before them the voice of the people is the voice of God and the same God being the politic of all the events that were happening because I'm going to prove it in the following scriptures and as I'll be explaining so that you understand that God was already behind even the activities of the judges that had been appointed by Samuel whose ways were no longer in the ways of God all this thing had been caused by the Lord so that the people turn against Samuel the prophet 
and prophet samuel is caused to anoint a king as per the wishes of the people that had been inspired by god at the same time then all the elders of israel gathered themselves together and came unto samuel at Ramah and said unto him behold you are now old and your sons no longer walk in your ways which are the ways of the lord now make us a king to judge over us like all nations but the thing displeased samuel when they said give us a king to judge us and samuel prayed unto the lord and the lord said unto samuel hearken unto the voice of the people in all they say unto you for they have not rejected you but they have rejected me that i should not reign over them the lord is saying the people have not rejected you samuel but they have rejected me but at the same time the lord is the one that is inspiring these people to reject samuel and at the same time the lord is saying these people have not rejected you samuel but they have rejected me as i said earlier i'm going to be proving that the lord is the one that has inspired these people to reject prophet samuel and ask for a king because it, this was now a way of the lord introducing a king over them and in first samuel chapter 8 verse 11 samuel is explaining to the children and the elders of israel explaining about the upcoming king his qualities and his requirements and he said this will be men of the king that shall reign over you he will take your sons and appoint them for himself for his chariots to be his horsemen and some shall run for, before his chariots and he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties and he will say to them to hear his ground and to reap his harvest to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots and he will take your daughters to be his confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers and he will take your fields and all your vineyards and your olive yards and even the best of them and give them to his servants and you will take the tenth of your seed and all your vineyards and give to officers and to his servants and you will take your men servants and your men servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work and you will take tenth of your sheep which is taxation which is done by almost every government and everything that samuel is explaining there is exactly what every ruler every king every president does there is no president there is no ruler there is no king that has been given the capacity to rule that does not survive or rule a nation without taxation without monopoly without dictatorship without using his own people and this is a rulership that has been ordained by god he has toler tolerated this type of rule for a certain season and for a certain purpose and for a certain reason so that the people may know that there is no other rulership there is no other democracy that can ever come from any other king which is more than the king of kings who is god that reigns over the kings meaning that this thing has been caused this thing has been inspired by the lord god but at the same time this thing has been inspired by the lord god so that it comes from within the interest of the people yet being inspired by god at the same time after samuel had explained all this the people still refused to obey the voice of samuel and they said we will have a king over us and samuel heard all the words of the people and he raised them in the ears of the lord and the lord said some to samuel i can unto their voice and make them a king and samuel said unto the men of israel go ye every man unto his city and the day then came that samuel is sent and appointed by the lord to anoint a king over israel then samuel took a vial of oil and put it upon the upon the head of saul and kissed him and said is it not because the lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance and the spirit of the lord 
will come upon thee and you shall prophesy with them and thou shalt be changed into another man. The one that is appointing Prophet Samuel to anoint Saul as a king is the same Lord that has inspired the people to turn against Samuel. The same Lord that has quoted to Samuel saying, the people have not rejected you but they have rejected me. This is the same Lord God that is politicking in the spirit and sending the same Samuel to anoint a king. To anoint a king, it means that this king is being inspired by the same God to reign over his people. I hope someone is understanding what I'm saying. And Samuel said to the people, See whom the Lord has chosen, that there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. And Saul reigned as king over the people. And Samuel was displeased. And the same Samuel that had been rejected by the people is the same Samuel that was used by the same God to anoint a king again. And in 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 1, Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, I came unto the voice of the words of the Lord. That said the Lord of the host, I remember this that was done by the Amalekites unto Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite the Amalek and utterly destroy everything and spare them not but slay both men and women, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camels and asses. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered, numbered them in Telem and 200,000 footmen and 10,000 of men of Judah. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Canaanites, Go depart, lest I destroy you with them, for you he showed kindness all unto the children of Israel. When they came up out of Egypt, so the Canaanites departed from among the Amal Amalekites, and so smote the Amalekites from Havila unto whom thou comest shall. And he took Agak, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But this thing that had been done by King Saul was not as per the instruction that had been given by Prophet Samuel. And Saul spared Agak and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refused, they destroyed utterly. Then, the, then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me, and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. The word of the Lord that is coming to prophet Samuel there, is repenting from making Saul a king. The same God that is repenting from making Saul the king is the same Lord that has inspired the people to turn against Samuel the prophet. The same God is the one that earlier has inspired prophet Samuel to anoint king Saul to reign over the people after making the Israelites turn against Samuel and his sons. I hope someone is understanding the level of politics that is being inspired by God. He turns the people of Israel against Samuel and they request for a king. After requesting a king, the same Lord appoints King Saul and anoints him through Samuel. The same Samuel, the prophet, who has been denied by the people. And after Saul has been anointed as king, the Lord, the same God, later repents from anointing King Saul because he has not taken instruction from Prophet Samuel. Meaning that 
the failure of King Saul of failing to take an instruction from Samuel is automatically again something that has been inspired by the same Lord God for a certain purpose for a certain season for a certain reason so that the Lord may appoint Samuel to anoint another king I hope someone is understanding what I'm saying and at that very moment Prophet Samuel denies King Saul as the king the very same Saul that had been anointed earlier by the same Lord through the end of Prophet Samuel and in chapter 15 verse 20 and Saul said unto Samuel I have disobeyed the voice of the Lord and I have gone in the way which the Lord had sent me and have brought Agag the king of the Amalekites and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites and the people took the spoil of the sheep and the oxen and the chief of the things which should not have been taken but utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgag and Samuel said as the Lord is great delight in burnt offerings and the sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord behold to obey is better than sacrificing and to hearken than to sacrifice which is prophet Samuel telling King Saul that obedience is better than sacrifice for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because of this thing the Lord has rejected you as king and Saul said unto Samuel I have sinned for I have transgressed against the commandments of the Lord and thy way because I fear the people and obey their voice. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, tell again with me that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return unto you, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. And Samuel turned about and went away. He held upon the sketch of the mantle of prophet Samuel. And Samuel said unto him, the Lord has rent your kingdom into two kingdoms. Everything that is happening there, people of God, is a thing that has been inspired by God, which has led again King Saul to be denied by the same God that appointed him as king. King Saul has been rejected as king by the same Samuel that anointed him to be king and the same Samuel the prophet has been anointed and appointed to be a prophet and caused to anoint a king that he let he later rejects and prophet Samuel in first Samuel chapter 16 verse 13 is influenced by the same God again to take the horn of the oil to anoint David in the midst of his brethren and the spirit of the Lord came, comes upon David and from that day David rises up and goes to Ramah and at that very same point of time the spirit of the Lord departed from King Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 14 and an evil spirit from the same Lord troubled soul people of God I want you to understand me the same Lord that is anointed King Saul is departed from King Saul and the same Lord that had anointed King Saul why is he was still a king he has departed from the King Saul and has anointed King David and why is he anointing King David an evil spirit from the Lord from the same God troubles King Saul and the same Lord at the same time appoints David and has elected David and has anointed David to go and deliver King Saul in the king's court. 
such is the politics of God. The one that is anointed is the one that is rejecting kings. He anoints a king. He appoints a king to reject another king. He anoints a king. Why is another king is reigning? I hope someone is understanding what I'm saying. The Lord God that has anointed a certain king, that has appointed a certain king, that has appointed a certain president, and why is that president is reigning over his people? The Lord has already anointed and appointed another president. The same Lord that has caused the people, the voice of the people that has been inspired by the Lord to reject a certain president, to reject a certain ruler over his people, is the same Lord that has influenced the anointing of a certain king, while is another king is still reigning. And that Lord is the same Lord that will reject the same president, reject the same king, and anoints another president, and anoints another king. Why is it that king is still in power, but he doesn't know that his power is only going to be short-lived because another king, because another president is already reigning. Why is he thinking, thinking he is still in power? I hope someone is understand is understanding the voice of the Lord in the political council three as the Lord becomes the politic as the Lord rejects and anoints kings as the Lord rejects president and anoints another president as the Lord anoints to reject at the same time child of God, there is no politicking that is beyond the politicking of God in heaven who anoints and rejects kings. I hope someone has understood the political council three in which God is the politic, is the politic, the politics with the kings, the politics within the people, he influences the people as the voice of the people but that voice of the people is not the capacity of the people but the capacity of the god in heaven that influences the prophecies of the prophets and the prophets have no choice but to anoint that which the god in heaven has chosen and the same prophets at the same time are going to be influenced to anoint the one that has been chosen by the Lord. Why is another one that was earlier anointed is rejected and the Lord spearheads and chooses another ruler, another leader through his influence of not only his prophets but his own politics. Child of God, the Lord is beyond the Lord is ahead of time he is the politic of all politicians he influences the prophets in the political council three until next time have a great blessed day